This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. I'm Mike Hebert, owner of Cantex Roofing and Construction. Every day is game day, and we'll get it right when it comes to your roofing, construction, windows, and mirrors. Call Cantex Roofing and Construction today. Together, we are one serving you. I got this uh, from our friend in Vernon early this morning. Uh, if you're going to be in the area today, the this is kind of an, an odd day for a parade, but I guess it's the kickoff of the 78th annual Santa Rosa Roundup Rodeo, okay? That's which, cool. Which starts tonight. They're going to have a prode- rodeo parade today at 345. I wonder if the kids get out early to be able to watch that. And then the Lions Club, you know, those Lions, they, wherever, wherever you are, there's a Lions Club, and it's, it's usually, you know, pretty active. They're going to have the Lions Club Pit Barbecue Meal tonight at the Horse Palace Barn on the Santa Rosa Rodeo Grounds. Uh, our friend in Vernon, our Red Raider friend in Vernon, will be the meat server, okay? Nice. So uh, I know if you weren't going to Tempe today, you'd drive over there to check that out. Right. I can't remember how far is Vernon from. Um, it's, I saw a sign for it when I was driving back on Sunday. It's probably a couple hours would be my yeah, guess. Yeah, be my guess. Yeah, you know, be my guess. Uh, so at any rate, if you've got the if you've got the time to do that today, then then go go right ahead. Uh, Pepsi Man was in Arlington last night. Put a picture of his World Championship ring that he received as being a fan uh, at the ball game last night. It looks pretty cool. So. Good for uh, good for Pepsi Man. Um, let's see. Go Chuck Go. Sounds like you need some motivation this morning since the chop blocks <laughs> started early today. I'll, I'll leave out the shots at you guys. <laughs> well, and and Jamie Jamie responded that the crazier I get, the more we go after him. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, because it's, from... it's it's us. It's us. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I mean, like it's Chuck's whole point here is not that we are losing something; it's mm-hmm. that they are getting something. Yeah. Okay, nobody is missing the Dodgers games or the Padres games. Right. Okay, you just don't want South Korea to have it first okay. to but open the season. Who cares? Well, I, I guess I did. And I guess everybody on the chat line does. <laughs> like you were going to watch the games. Right. No, I, you're right. You're, you're right. I'm, that's not like I'm... I mean, you can't even in. find Rip Griffin Park, okay, in <laughs> no, our own I where, town. I know where it is. Okay. But you're devastated that the Dodgers <laughs> and Padres I know where, I know are where it is. playing in the U.S. to start the season. I, I know where and it is. And there's a reason that they mm-hmm. have to start it before the season. Yeah. To make it fair for those teams. Yeah. Okay? It's, there's a reason. They can't finish a series on Wednesday and play here on mm-hmm. Thursday. Yeah. They need a little time off before they get back to play, playing mm-hmm. games in the U.S. And that's it. J- Jamie, do you know anybody that's... Do, do, you, do you feel like it ruined opening day? Was nobody excited for opening day because the pumped. Dodgers and Padres played over there? No. Nobody cared. I was they were excited for opening day. No, you weren't. Yes, I was. Because <laughs> the Reds weren't the first game. I was just disappointed that it was over there. I was just this. That was, I was disappointed. Uh, this, from the 8th Swing Center chat line, my wife and I have tickets for the Josh Young ring night. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so, yesterday, so switch gears here, uh, get over to, to hoops a little bit. Uh, Coach Grant McCaslin announced the hiring of Jeff Linder. He is... Uh, been the head coach at Wyoming and prior to that at Northern Colorado over the last eight seasons. So for the last eight years, he's been the guy in charge. And now he's come to a decision of going to take a step back, but maybe it's a step back so he can take a big step forward of being a part of a power four conference and a, you know, basketball operation that's much bigger than Wyoming could ever dream of being. Um, and he's going to work for somebody that he's worked for previously. And for Grant McCaslin, he gets to bring in somebody who, I guess, knows him and knows his offense, knows his defense, knows how he maybe wants things done, how he wants things coached. Um, but it is an interesting hire. Uh, it's, I think it's really interesting. You know, just from the standpoint that, um, you know, you, you've got a guy that was a head coach, and it wasn't like a head coach for like a year. or Like eight years. Like eight years, he's been like – He's been like the guy. And sometimes when you when you and I don't know, maybe there was some pressure on him at Wyoming that, hey, you gotta win this year or else, or maybe he looked at it and went, 
hey, the NIL stuff isn't going to come to Wyoming. I want to be in the middle of that because I want to become a head coach at a Big 12 school or a SEC school or an ACC school or whatever. And maybe he sees this as a as a way to, to grow his career. Or maybe he just feels like, okay, it's time for me to be the number two. Yeah, it didn't seem like uh, with the record there that it was going great. No. Mm-mm. Okay. Um, it, I do think there's probably a lot of truth to the fact that there are going to be some mid-major coaches that know that they're just tired of, hey, I'm going to bring these guys in and I'm going to recruit them. I'm going to bring them in. We're going to coach them up. And then if they get good. They're gone. They're gone. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's got to be frustrating. Yeah, that's just can't that can't be fun to deal with. Um, so the sense, and I do think that some people just enjoy being an assistant more than mm-hmm. they want, sure. want being a head coach, but he's been a head coach for a while. So mm-hmm. the whole, um, coming here and coaching here so he can be a head coach in a power five. I, I don't know if that's true or not. I do not know. Um, I don't feel like it's a step back. I mean, from everything we hear, he's getting paid as much as he was there okay okay or, or probably even maybe a little bit more More, yeah and and so he's not taking a step back financially mm-hmm. just shows you how much money you're investing into your basketball coaches right um which i guess is a good thing and i think also i mean the level of competition here is going to be substantially better than what he was going to experience at wyoming well, and, he, well yeah but i mean he was going to be a head coach and not right, an assistant I know, coach i know so i know i don't know it's just really odd to see a, a head coach say no nope, don't want to be a head coach i want to i want to go be an assistant somewhere it's yeah it, it it, it so, is it is and but and, if it ends up benefiting texas tech well then great yeah and and like I said, maybe he looked at this and went, I'd rather be here and kind of be in the hunt than uh, than be in Wyoming. Um, but it, it did set off kind of so, a, a so, chain reaction. So what's what's better? Is it better to be a, a minor league head coach or a major league assistant? Because that's what feels like mid-major ba- college basketball is, mm-hmm. is about to become, right? Mm-hmm. Where, hey, you guys coach them up, and if they're good, we'll, we'll take them off your hands for you. We'll call them up to the big leagues. I, I think it, in this case, it's, it's appearing that it's better to be an assistant at a major program than to be a head coach at a mid-major, unless you're just in love with the place. Yeah, no, I think you're probably right. Uh, 640 this morning. First on time the, this morning. <laughs> well, <laughs> ring the bell, man. You got the time right. <laughs> ring the bell. I got the name of the Guardians right today, too. Uh, this day in sports history is uh, next. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Time for this day in sports history. Today is May the 15th, 2024. Here is Jeff McGuire. Going to start in 1912, gentlemen, okay. as Ty Cobb rushes a heckler at the New York Highlanders game <laughs> and gets suspended. <laughs> Who knew? Bad deal. They had no malice, though, in that. In the, no palace there, right? No riot. I NBA. mean, I wasn't there, so I'm not going to say there wasn't yeah. a riot, but uh, 1918. Washington Senators Walter Johnson pitches a one to nothing win in an eighteen inning game. Hmm. He went all eighteen, all eighteen innings. Yeah. Nineteen thirty five Major League Baseball Pittsburgh Pirates squeak past the Phillies twenty to five in Philadelphia's Baker Bowl. Nineteen forty one mark this day down, gentlemen. We'll be talking about it in about fifty six days. Oh, okay. Because New York Yankee Joe DiMaggio starts a 56-game hitting streak mm-hmm. with the uh, with the only RBI in a 13-1 to loss to the visiting Chicago White Sox. Hmm. wonder how long that 56-game hit streak would last. <clears throat> it was a joke. I mean, when was the War of 1812 kind of, yeah. kind of deal? Yeah, that was Sorry. good. 1973. Well, yeah. California Angel Nolan Ryan gets his very first no hitter, beats the Kansas City Royals three to nothing. A uh, special day in Chuck Hinesland in 1981. Mm. The TV comedy film The Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island airs for the first <laughs> time on NBC. I probably watched that. I know I did. Yeah, I didn't watch it in '81, but I've definitely seen that. 
1989, Major League Baseball Toronto Blue Jays fire manager Jimmy Wills, uh, Jimmy Williams. He was replaced by Cito Gaston. It worked out really well for him. That's an understatement. Jimmy, J-I-M-Y, Williams. 1991, U.S. President George H.W. Bush takes Queen Elizabeth to the Oakland Athletics Baltimore Orioles baseball game. I think they got her a hot dog, too. I would be embarrassed if they didn't. I think they did. 2005, Texas Tech men's track captured their first ever Big 12 title in Manhattan, Kansas. The men's squad recorded 149.5 points for the victory. And in 2022, the Major League Baseball Pittsburgh Pirates get a 1-0 win over the Cincinnati Reds, despite getting no hit in Pittsburgh. (laughs) Happy National Chocolate Chip Cookie Day and Juice Slushy Day. Mm, Nothing like a nice soft chocolate chip cookie. Happy birthday to a plethora of people. Ray Lewis is 49, Andy Murray, 37, Emmett Smith, 55, Ryan Leaf, 48, Rod Smith, 54, Desmond Howard, 54, George Brett, 71, Josh Beckett, 44, John Smoltz, 57. Goodness. And Dan Patrick is 68 today. Dan Patrick, the radio host that follows us here on Double T 97.3, right? Is there another uh, Dan another, Patrick yeah, that's 68 governor. years old? Yeah, I was going to say there's a politician of yeah. some sort. Yeah, yeah but when I mention a politician that isn't cool. <laughs> no. And on this day in 1942. <laughs> I've got questions. Well, how many cool politicians do we know and how many do I mention? Uh, Lieutenant Ronald Reagan, a cavalry officer, applies for a reassignment to the Army Air Force, where he would eventually put into the thespian background to use in World War II propaganda films. The transfer was approved on June 9th, and Reagan was given a job in a public relations office for the first motion picture unit. Their uh, acronym, FMPU, is pronounced FUMPU. Production mil- uh, produced military training morale and propaganda video uh, films in an, uh, to aid in the war effort. FUMPU released Frank Capra's Why We Fight series and a documentary of the bomber Memphis Bell, the crew of which completed a uh, standard setting 25 bombing missions in Europe. The films were screened on domestic training grounds and in troop camps overseas as well in movie theaters across the home front. Mm. And that is this day in sports history. (laughs) All right. It's uh, time for your lucky local winning word from Double T 97.3 in the home zone, making your house a home. We're giving away money to local listeners. So all you have to do is listen at this time at 845 and at 445 this afternoon during Tech Talk. Then log on to Double T 97.3.com. Enter the local winning word for your chance to win weekly cash every Tuesday and Thursday. So not today. Did yesterday and potentially tomorrow. And then, of course, on June the 20th, over at Two Docks, we're going to give away $2,500. It's a cash giveaway from the home zone, making your house a home in Double T 97.3. And right now, just go to Double T 97.3.com and enter this word. A Husky player this year, this week, got $2 million. We're not giving away $2 million, but the word is Huskies, H-U-S-K-I-E-S. Huskies, as in Washington Huskies, okay? Washington Huskies. So just put in Huskies at 645, and you could win. Can't can't be for the national champs? They weren't the national champs. They played in the national championship game. UConn? Oh, it could be for the, yeah, it could be. Yeah, sure. Connecticut Huskies, yeah, you could say that too. Yeah. I was thinking the other coast, Washington. Yeah, yeah, it could be either. You're right. Yeah, absolutely. So for the basketball hoop champs, Huskies, H-U-S-K-I-E-S, they spell it the same way. No no Y apostrophe S, I-E-S. I'm sure if you misspelled it, Jamie would. We'll, get, we'll, catch, we'll, we'll cut you some slack. We'll cut you a little slack. We're good like that. Yeah. 651 this morning. Just don't put Labradors. That one won't work. Morning. Labradors. Drive. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, welcome back to Risa. Thank you for being with us. She says, man, I missed these voices. Morning, Jeff. Hey, Jamie. Good day, Chuck. I am feeling better today and hope I have great news tomorrow from my oncologist. We 
do as well. Appreciate your thoughts and prayers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening, uh, Risa. We have missed hearing from you as well. Um, We get this uh, with regard to basketball. Now we need players, and time is running out. Uh, Is it? I mean, I'm sure that they're working on quite a few. I mean, it seemed like last year we – we were much deeper into the summer before we were this far along with our roster. It doesn't mean that you have to always be this way because they'd really like to have the players in for the summer and working out together and getting to know each other. So they don't have to put, <clears throat> hi, my name is Bob, on their practice jersey for day one of practice. Yeah, this one's, uh, it's, I kind of go both ways in deciding whether I'm worried or not worried mm-hmm. just because of what you just said. Coach McCaslin did such a good job and his staff last year of, you know, grabbing guys even right up until the last minute, it felt like, with Joe yeah. Tucson and, and adding to your team and improving your team. So there's that confidence level that you feel like, hey, um, he can still get it done. We can still add a bunch of good players. But then I also see lots of really talented guys coming out of the portal and being off the market. And yeah, going so, to the places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so you're at that point kind of just wondering, you know, what, uh, who, who, how many good, good bodies are left. You're right. Yeah. You're right. And, and then the other thing I wonder is, and I, and I don't know, I have not examined the Wyoming roster and the who's in the portal is, does anybody come with Jeff Linder to Texas Tech? The new okay. assistant coach. Yeah, I have not, I have not examined yeah. the roster. Yeah. Uh, we get this question. Could you ever see mid-major teams receiving compensation for developing players to their program, like a placement system, Power 5? <clears throat> you know, at this point in time, I think anything's possible. That feels like that's <laughs> – that's like in, in college football how there's like, hey, you need to play these smaller schools to help pay for their athletic budget. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's a payday for them. Almost feels like that would be fair in this situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, sure, anything's possible. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Good morning with Jamie Lent and Jeff McGuire. I mean, it's gone quickly this morning. I think we've had a very spirited conversation today. So hope hope you've enjoyed it. If you've missed it, well, there's more to come, okay? I haven't emptied the bucket yet. High School Fan Zone tonight at 6. We'll have coaches from Friendship, Cooper, and Liberty all on the air for you tonight. The uh, Astros and the A's will follow on 100.7 the score at 7. Well, the Rangers and the Guardians tonight from Arlington, 630 and then 7.05 first pitch. Tomorrow, high school baseball. Game one as uh, Lubbock Cooper and Monterey will play over at Dan Law Field at Rip Griffin Park. 7 o'clock first pitch on 100.7 score. And then the Red Raiders, they'll be playing in Tempe against Arizona State. 8 o'clock, our broadcast time, 8.30, will be um, first pitch. You might, uh, you might just stay at the ballpark, Jamie, <laughs> just... Put up a cot, you know. You could have a little... From Thursday into Friday? <laughs> yeah, Thursday into Friday, right. Yeah. Well, I need to do the morning drive. Well, so no, I you could... could I could do could, it from the ballpark? From the ballpark, you, yeah. You'd allow that? Sure. Okay. I'd allow that, right. Yeah, sure. Uh, somebody had asked about this. Jamie, is there a place in Tempe you would recommend to eat, or is there a place to go that you like to go to when you're there? I, I've been there once, and... I, I would just tell you this. Go to Mill Out Avenue. Um, that's that's the hot spots and University Drive. So if you go to Mill and University Drive, Mill Avenue is where all the kind of the, the hot spots are. Um, you, can, you can find yourself some... I, I, if you like to be around some vibrancy and a little bit of action, that's that's where it is. Okay? okay. <laughs> that's where it is. Mill Avenue. So Mill Avenue. Mill Avenue. So look for... Look for Jamie on Mill Avenue uh, tomorrow night. I, like Mill Avenue sounded right, and then you mentioned the University Drive thing, mm-hmm. and I'm like, he's he's just throwing out random names that every college city has one of those streets. <laughs> well, but I mean, it's, it's, but it's <laughs> but then I believed you because of the Mill Avenue thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's it's when I, my one trip to Tempe. As long as it's not like a close relative to Mass Street. Okay, I don't, I don't want it to be. I don't want them to be related. No, I don't. If think I'm going to go there. Yeah, I don't think they are. Is it anywhere near Electric Avenue? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. All I know is I know I could take it higher if I got there. Yeah, yeah. All I know is that Mill Avenue, this couple of spots that we went to, uh, they were the joint was jumping. Okay, I was like, mm-hmm. wow, yeah, I like this. 
Got a little action going here. Everybody's having a good time. Throwing a few back, you know. It's just crowded at the bar, you know. It's just, there's, mm-hmm. there's, I feel like it was like, man, this and is. People walk in there and they're like, there's Jamie leading the charges. <laughs> <laughs> there's Jamie on karaoke up there. You know, you know. Wow, he just did the whole Beastie Boys License to Ill album. Uh, that, that'd be that'd be oh. the day, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> and there wasn't even any music playing. He just went up and did it. It was weird. With with regard to these games, um, you know, I think it, it kind of sounds like this is kind of a setup, obviously, for next week because uh, Coach Tadlock said that next week, he said it'll be all hands on deck. Um each day there won't be any hey who's starting on tuesday who's starting on wednesday who's going on thursday it'll be win day one and then go from there he said which can be a lot of fun i mean really i think we've gone through seasons here where we've done that daily i think back to 2014 with chris sadbury as really the one guy you had where you go hey this guy's gonna go six innings yeah there's some truth to that and that's you know Dylan Dushek had such a great postseason that year, mm-hmm. and he had been just a midweek starter for you all season long. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you had guys like Johnny, not uh, you had Johnny Droz coming out of the bullpen, but you had Jonathan Tripp that was a guy that used sparingly as a starter, and he would he would start a, f- a few times for you. And then of course Cameron Smith was terrific. Ryan Mosley. Um, had a terrific year as well, but it was, you know, some of those guys, most of those guys would be used as bullpen guys, and then, oh, nope, they're a starter this time. Nope, back to bullpen. It was flip-flopping all the time. But and they uh, made it work. Yeah. It, you remember that postseason, it was 100% about your pitching staff. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, like you said, for next week, it and what Coach Tadlock said, it's like, hey, you, you – you lose two and your season's done. You know, the only way that you probably have any kind of a shot is uh, is, is winning the tournament or maybe, maybe Jamie, maybe making the Big 12 championship game. That might be enough. I don't know. Yeah, we, we, we'll have to see. It depends on what the path that you take. I mean, the truth of the matter is if you win on – if you win on Wednesday night against the number three seed, and you would imagine that number three seed would have a decent RPI, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, probably inside the top thirty, maybe even inside the top twenty. You're going to have to pay the number two seed, play the number two seed the next day. So if you were to beat them, I mean, again, another decent RPI team. Sure. Then you start talking about okay, well, you've put together some really quality, you know, or a couple quality back to back wins, and maybe you're getting yourself in a conversation. Right. Yeah. And but then at that point, well, if you won those two games, well, now you go stink it up for the next two. Then your RPI slips a little bit. Yeah. And so you, you understand you don't get to just play those two and go, OK, we're tapping out. We're good. We just made it inside the top 40. We're good. No, yeah. you have to keep playing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so, I mean, and you, you, so more you opportunities no- to improve upon that. And also more opportunities for that to slip off yeah. and then that's where you start getting worried about okay we somehow found a way to win those two what do we got left and you got to turn a light switch on i mean that's really yeah. what you're kind of trying to turn it this. feels like if you are going to do damage in this postseason okay if you're in this big 12 tournament mm-hmm. your offense needs to find a path to being really good just doesn't feel like you have enough healthy available arms to make a run through the Big 12 tournament without your offense being really good. How um, how does uh, the ballpark in Arlington play for the Tech offense? Yeah, it's I mean it's 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 a pitcher's park still. So it, when, for, not for college teams that are playing in there, yeah, yeah, it's a pitcher's park. Okay, um, think they could hire Adolis Garcia for the weekend? I'm trying. <laughs> That'd be nice. I'm trying to remember just because you played there at the beginning of the season and you played five games. Uh, was it two or three home runs you hit in five games? It wasn't a whole lot, was it? I know. I know. Tracer hit one out to right and Austin hit one out to left. And I think those are the only two that you hit. Uh, somebody asked this question of you, Jamie. Um, if you had a magic wand to wave over this baseball season, what would you have fixed? 
I would fix the health of the pitching staff. Yeah, that's that's what yeah. I figured you were going to mm-hmm. say. You're going to say, "Hey, I I want you know all these guys to be healthy." Yeah, I mean, or as be, healthy as it be, could be. Because when you pitch well, it takes pressure off of your offense. Mm-hmm. Right? He still might have had some struggles on defense at times, but. I, it just feels like you would have taken so much pressure off your offense. You would. Have, how many close games did you lose? You know that, that stretch where you lost four consecutive Big Twelve games by mm-hmm. a run, and the other one by two. You know, so you had lost five games by a combined whatever it was, six runs yeah, or whatever. That, there was that stretch, right? Okay, just think how that that would change. I mean, you winning those games and guys relaxing at the plate because you're you're feeling better about things and all that. I, if you I mean, could only have one of the pitchers back, would it be who? Zane Petty or would it be somebody else? Yeah. Yeah, it would be Zane Petty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody else says this, I would fix the lack of a clutch gene, hit much better with runners in scoring position. Uh, uh, that, that would be number two on the list. But, uh, I mean, if I'm picking between the two, give, give, me, the, give, you the, give me the four or five pitchers you've lost mm-hmm. back and – uh, you're winning some low-scoring games, yes, but again, I feel like that would pre- take some pressure off of the hitters a yeah. little bit. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is brought to you by Connecticut of West Texas. All right, so my question for you guys today involves Red Raider basketball. Mm -hmm. I've been pretty football heavy of late with my questions. So today Mm -hmm. we're going Red Raider basketball. In comparison to last season, what do you hope the Red Raiders do better this year than they did last year? I I hope. This is going to kind of sound weird, but I hope they come together quicker than they did last year. I I feel like they really were trying to find themselves in terms of what their identity was and who they were. And and part of it is new coach, you know, completely new staff for the most part, you know, a lot of a ton of new players. And it just felt like you really struggled in your non-conference season to like, you're going, oh, my God, are we going to lose this game? Or, man, we're just not playing very well or we're not shooting very well. Or we're just not – is there – what? it just didn't – it didn't look very fluid. And and really, frankly, for me, it didn't look fluid until the – I think the January 1st game. I went to that game and we are playing like San Diego State or somebody. And I was like, okay. I, I think I walked out of the game. And I think I even said it the next day or the, the first day that we were back after that after that game, whatever day of the week it was. I think it was Sunday. Anyway, I said, it felt like for the first time we looked like a basketball team. But it took from early November to that point where I felt like, oh, okay, it looks like we got something here. So I'd like you to find out who you are sooner and play a little better in the non-conference, play a little bit more together. Does that make any sense? Yeah, no, it, it makes sense. I, I, I do remember questioning the team or wondering about the team a little bit mm-hmm. uh, in non-conference play. Did you play San Diego State this year? North Alabama, Jacob. Thank you. It was, okay. It was. But yeah, it was, I was looking on schedule, but I, was, I don't I, remember that one. You know, North like, Alabama, <laughs> San Diego State. It's, there's a lot of similarities there. They sure, both have sure. really tall guys. Right. And basketball the, you know, you know, shoes. Uniforms and, are similar. Let's be honest. There's a lot to not uh, remember. Once, isn't San Diego State black and red? I don't know. <laughs> North Alabama appears to be purple and white. Yeah, that's in Chuck. Candy Whitaker's the head <laughs> women's basketball coach now. In Chuck's defense, there's a lot to not have to remember about our non-basketball conference schedule, especially games at home. Our non-basketball, our, our non-schedule, <laughs> our non-conference basketball schedule at home. Kind of in Chuck's like something defense. I would say. You know, <laughs> non-conference basketball schedule. Um. The what I'd like to see them improve on, and I think some of it is just the personnel that you have will automatically do this. Uh, not have to take thirty shots to make four. Like, and I don't want to just say shooting percentage because that feels like very hollow. And you well, obviously you want to make more shots, but not just be volume shooters. Be shooters 
I, I don't need you to make 50% of your shots, but I don't need one person or two people taking 30 total shots to make six baskets. And I think your personnel change is going to do that already. But that's the, the first thing that jumped onto my uh, out of my head for what I would like to see improved on, because that was rather annoying in your losses this year. Yeah. So, I mean, clearly you're, I mean, you're specifically speaking towards one guy, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Pop Isaac, who's not here anymore. And he definitely had his, he had some great games for you over the last couple of seasons, but he, I mean, especially last year, he had some games where he was a volume shooter. And not a, yeah. Yeah. And not a, like six of them. Efficient shooter. Is that fair to say? Mm-hmm. I know it is. So I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> uh, my answer for you guys, and I think if you look at the season totals, they don't um, scream that you struggled in this area. Um, but I would like you to rebound better than last year. And that, that obviously that comes from um, having bigs, and it comes from... Uh, I thought you were a tough team last year, but it comes from your bigs also being healthy. Mm-hmm. And th- the loss of Cambridge last year was 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 big for you in that regard. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it also had something to do with the fact that you were playing two undersized guards together. Yeah. Um, and so you didn't get a lot of help from those guys in that area. But it felt like there were games I can I can remember back to UCF and Cincinnati when you were going through that tough stretch where it just felt like rebounding was such a problem for the Red Raiders. And again, I, I think the the injuries and the and the health issues because remember it wasn't just injuries but guys being sick. I think that was a, this a big factor in you struggling with this. But mm-hmm. I'd like to see a, a a team that rebounds better than it felt like you did last year. I was trying to get to the. The rebounding kind of where you were. One point two margin positive okay. on the season. Okay. Uh, one thousand one hundred and eighty eight to one thousand one hundred and forty eight. Mm-hmm. So you were barely ahead of your opponents, but remember that includes um Jeff's non basketball conference schedule. <laughs> okay. So what I what I was looking for on the rebounding was how it went with defense. Like, okay, for instance, your your offensive rebounds uh, were pretty even with your opponent. They you were at three thirty four. They were at three forty one. From a defensive rebounding standpoint, you had you were pretty good seven ninety one to seven oh seven. Um, but then in uh, in conference play, um, that was pretty close. Was in within a couple of rebounds. But yeah, I I can see what you, what you're saying there is 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 uh, you know doing a better job rebounding. Um, no, no, no question. And, and scoring, I mean, you, in the big 12 play, you averaged 68 points a game. You gave up 73 a game. So you'd like to be, you'd probably like to be in the seventies from a scoring standpoint. You'd probably like to shoot the ball a little bit better, particularly maybe from, from three. You're at about 32% from three. And I had yeah, one. you'd like to see that about five percentage points higher. Yeah. And you had a couple of guys that were. Volume shooters, but not yeah, take, volume volume makers. <laughs> yeah, take, take Pop Isaacs out of the mix, and you probably did shoot 35, 36, 38%, whatever. Yeah, yeah he was 33 of uh, 92 in Big 12 play. That's 36%, but for the for the year, he was uh, 62 of 164. He wasn't too bad, but, you know, there was there were others that were not quite as good. Anyway, um, those some good thoughts. Yeah. Um, your thoughts, your comments, Yates Warring Center chat line. Somebody says winning road games. Sure. I mean, especially in the Big 12. I mean, winning some road games would be ideal. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. For being with us today on the Morning Drive on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 97.3.com. With Jamie Lent and Jeff McGuire, I'm Chuck Hines. We come to you from the First United Bank studio. Reset the deck for you. Today is Wednesday. It's the day the work gets done. We'll have High School Fan Zone uh, on the air for you tonight at 6 o'clock. Coaches from Friendship, Cooper, and Liberty uh, come into the High School Fan Zone tonight to visit from 6 until 7. The uh, Lubbock Cooper baseball team is in action tomorrow. 
They'll uh, take on Monterey. We'll have that game for you from Rip Griffin Park at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. And then on uh, Friday, we'll have uh, the Liberty Cooper uh, baseball team. They take on Idaloo. Those games will come to us from the Friendship Ballpark. That'll be a 6 o'clock uh, airtime on 93.1 Texas FM. We'll have game two on Saturday. And then game three is, uh, ne- if necessary, we'll follow uh, game two on Saturday. Game game two is a noon start. Uh, the Lubbock Cooper uh, Monterey game on Friday will start at 7. And then if game three is necessary, they'll play that on Saturday. So that's uh, among the high school teams that are in action and what we'll have on the air for you. The friendship season came to an end last weekend, so they are uh, they are done as far as uh, baseball is concerned. We'll have Red Raider baseball on the air for you tomorrow from Tempe as they take on Arizona State. We'll have it at 8, play-by-play at 8.30, and then uh, Friday it's a doubleheader. We'll have a day game on uh, Friday at uh, 2.30 for the broadcast. 3 o'clock, first pitch, they'll take on the Running Rebels of UNLV. I wonder if they call them the Running Rebels. They, I think that's only for their basketball only team. Only for their basketball team. I think team. we yeah. talked about this when they came here okay. and brought Mike Maddox or um, Greg Maddox with them a couple years ago. And this, they're just the Rebels. They're just the, only the Running Rebels basketball team. Okay. They're just the Rebels and everything Just the Rebels, else. okay. Yeah. But, like, if they start stealing bases... You might be running, but you can't run on Kevin Bazell, you know, kind of deal. Because <laughs> he's got a good arm, right? He does. Running Rebels ain't running today. He does have a good arm. <laughs> Hacks will come up with something. You'll, you guys will come up with something. And then they'll play Arizona State again on uh, Friday night. Do you think, and I do want to get Hopefully we don't call them the walking Rebels. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Do you Do you think there's a... There's a part of this when you kind of when you kind of and maybe you'll have a sense of this later today when you're around the team a little bit more or maybe even specifically tomorrow that that this might be the first time in quite some time that they won't play with any pressure and that you might see a different baseball team. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that that's not possible, Chuck. I don't have a sense of whether they will feel that way or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't, you, if you were, if you were a positive thinking person like you are, Mm -hmm. uh, I think that you could, you could say that Mm -hmm. if you were, um, maybe more of a realist, uh, you would worry or wonder, okay, is it a possible that they're like, okay, these games don't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, we're just finishing out a string here. So you don't see a team play with any kind of sense of urgency or mm-hmm. you don't see a team. They, they know the pitchers are just getting ready for next week. And so they're not going to, we're not going to see our best stuff on the mound for an extended period of time. And so it's maybe they're not as motivated as they should be. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what you're going to get from the team. I really don't. Yeah. I do think it is. It has the possibility to do what you said and give them a, a chance to play with a little less pressure and to, you know, maybe. I, I don't want to act like the competition's not great. Um, both of them are above 500. Uh, Arizona State's coming off a sweep of. Of Stanford last weekend. Okay, so, all right. So that's a team that's been playing well of late, and and so I, I don't want to act like well they're going to go and go and okay, well these aren't Big Twelve teams, they're no good. I'm not mm-hmm. suggesting that at all. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying if since they kind of know the situation they're in, where it's unlikely that you are making the NCAA tournament unless you win the Big Twelve tournament, where's my motivation here? Yeah. kind of a deal. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to get. Yeah. I'm not saying you or I would be that way. I'm not saying that most of those guys would think they were that way, mm-hmm. but you just don't know until you see what they do, how they handle it. Yeah. Um yeah, well, do you think uh, do, were you surprised are, are you surprised cuz it seems like a lot of teams when they've been in the non-conference week that they've played home games. What what do you think was the the thought process of going on the road at this point as opposed to you know, bring it in, you know, Saskatchewan State, you know, for, you know, a couple of games? Um, probably the probably the possible RPI boost Competition. Could, could, have, yeah. could, could have come. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's interesting. Uh, speaking of that, 
you know, so we had talked yesterday about the TCU Baylor situation where, you know, the Bears and the and the Frogs had decided not to play their game on Tuesday and come to find out it had a bunch to do with Peyton Tolley's mom that had passed, had away, passed away for mm-hmm. TCU, right? And so mm-hmm. that's what they're where the well being of our student athletes came into play, okay. right? So I hate hearing that story and and good luck to Peyton and, and his family. Thoughts and prayers. I'm sure they're listening. But um, <laughs> at the same time, I, we questioned why they would even schedule that game. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. right before sure. this this Thursday start. And you're I mean, you don't want to you don't want to have extra games at this point of the yeah. season. Right. You want you got to you want to save your pitching and you want to get these guys some extra rest and all that. Well. So, guess how many games? One, two, three, four, five. So, there were six games scheduled in the Big 12 yesterday. Guess how many played? Oh. Two. Two. Okay. Guess which two Big 12 teams elected to play games. I'm going to say K-State, and um, I'll say K-State was one, and I'll say uh, Cincinnati was the other. Okay. So, over two. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Who has nothing to play for at this point? Houston and... BYU and Baylor. Yeah. Okay. And guess who played? Houston and BYU. We know the Baylor situation. Yeah. So the other four games, they canceled. I just... It was too wet why, to play. Yeah. What, so <laughs> what? I mean, I guess I'm... Maybe there's the thought that, hey, maybe we'll need that game mm-hmm. to give us another data point, you know, to help our RPI, but nobody's playing great competition. We'll just send you the check, man. We're not we're not interested. <laughs> so, so it's just odd that the schools even scheduled midweek games this yeah. week. This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.